intention. He responded to the physical dua. Let him not die until he sees the faces of the prostitute. So Juraj did see the face of the prostitute, but he did not do that after them. Okay? So this is the beauty of the Rahmah of Allah. He responded to the mother's dua and he also saved Juraj from the evil that was meant for him. So when he saw this, he remembered the dua of his mother because he saw the face of a prostitute. So he remembered his, his, dua, his, his mother's dua and he said, okay, let me pray. He prayed, he did wudu, he prayed two rak'ahs and he poked the baby and he said, speak, who is your father? So the baby spoke up and this is one of the three that spoke from the cradle. The Prophet said there are only three babies that have spoken from the cradle. Isa, this one, and the third baby that was uh, punished at the time of uh, Ashab al-Ukhdud. Uh, long story, but basically this is the third of the three. So the baby spoke up and he said, My father is the shepherd. When they saw this miracle, they said, O Juraj, allow us to build your monastery with gold and silver. He said, No, let it be built with mud as it was. Just give it back to me. So they built it back with mud and they gave it back to him. The point is though, here Juraj preferred ibadah, which was nafil, over his mother and father's call. And this shows you, and some narrations of the hadith, the Prophet is reported to have said, May Allah have mercy on Juraj. Had he been a faqih, a knowledgeable person, he would have responded to his mother over the dua. This shows you the alim is a thousand, a million times better than the worshipper. The one who stands in prayer all day and fasts, and fasts all day and night, the alim is a million times better than him because he knows what to do, when to do it. Had Juraj been an alim, a faqih, he was not. He was a jahil worshipper, but he had iman and taqwa. But he didn't know he preferred the salah over the call to his mother. But the point is that he preferred that which could have been delayed. He could have broken his salah. If your parents call out to you and they need you, you should break your nafil salah and shorten your fard salah. If it's fard, then you cannot break it unless it's a life and death situation. Immediately shorten it and finish it up. But if it's nafil, right then and there, break it and go and respond to the call of your parents. But instead, he preferred the prayer over his mother, so his mother made a dua against him. The point is, if you want your dua responded to, obviously, it cannot interfere with something more important than the dua. This is also one of the uh, pre-etiquettes of dua. Uh, Tayyib, now we'll move on to the actual etiquettes of dua. During dua, what should be done and what should not, uh, and what should not be done. We'll discuss that, and then we'll take a break uh, for uh, another snack break and an asr break, another inshallah, 20-30 minutes inshallah, we'll take another break. Uh, the etiquette of dua While we are making dua What should we do? The first thing we should do Is to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Before asking anything we want Once a person was praying Making dua And he said Oh Allah Allahumma firli wa hamni Forgive me and grant me mercy The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said You have been hasty You have been quick You have been impatient So he said Ya Rasulullah what should I do? So he said, when you make dua, then praise Allah. Send, yani thana upon Allah that he is worthy of, and then send salat upon me, and then state your dua. There should be an introduction to the dua. There should be some type of, of prelude, some type of alhamdulillah, some type of yani thana subhanallah, some type of praising that Allah is worthy of. And then you ask your needs. This is the only thing. Even when we go to one, uh, a person who is in need, do we just immediately go there and, and ask for something? No. We give some type of prelude, some type of, of, of talk, and then we ask our needs. And walillah al a'la, to Allah belongs the best example. We should praise Allah, send thana or praises and tamjeed and glorify Him, and then ask our dua. When another person heard the same hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he then raised his hands and praised Allah lengthily. And then he made his dua. So the Prophet ﷺ said, O worshipper, make your dua and it will be responded to. Because you have praised Allah, it will be responded to. In another hadith, uh, the Prophet ﷺ says, when one of you has finished the salah, basically, then let him begin by praising Allah and glorifying Him, then pray upon the Prophet ﷺ. After that, he may make any dua that he wishes. Don't just raise your hands and, and say, O oh Allah, forgive me, O oh Allah, grant me this and that. No. Give some praises. Even if it's Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Maliki Yawm al Any type of praise that Allah is worthy of, then you start your dua. This is what is uh, befitting. Um, as a side point here, one of the best ways also to make dua is to use Allah's names and attributes as, as a beginning of the dua. As Allah says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ uh, As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَةِ فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا To Allah belongs the most beautiful names. فَدْعُوهُ Make dua using these names. This is one of the best ways to begin the dua. If you want to ask for forgiveness, 
raise your hands and start saying, Ya Ghafuru, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Wadudu, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Tawab. This is the best way. You want to make dua for money, for rizq? Ya Razzaq, Ya Mannan, Ya Kareem. You want to make dua against your enemy? Ya Shadeed al Iqab, Ya Qawiyu, Ya Aziz. Those names and attributes that are befitting Allah at that dua, for that dua. You want to make dua for uh, progeny and children? Ya Warith. Ya whoever, whatever is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Warith, there's a difference between, by the way, is it a name or not? So I'm just giving that as an example. Some ulama say it is, some ulama say it's not. But the point is, you use a name that is befitting to Allah. Found in the Quran and Sunnah, that is deserving of Allah and is related to your dua. Whatever you want to ask, you will find a name and attribute that is related to that. So you start your dua by praising Allah using these names and attributes and especially the Ismullah al-A'zam, the greatest name. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that uh, one, person, excuse me, one person came and in front of the Prophet and he said, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi annaka anta Allahu la ilaha illa anta al-ahad al-samad al-ladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakulhu kufwa nahad. This is the introduction. He said, oh Allah, I ask you because la ilaha illa ant. You are Ahad, you are Samad. Al-Ahad means the unique, the one. The Samad means the one whom everything in creation turns to. Al-Ahad al-Samad, uh, that lam yalid wa you do not beget, nor are you begotten, and there is no, nothing similar to you. He started the dua like this. The Prophet ﷺ said, this person has asked Allah by his greatest name, Ism al-A'zam. Through which, if he, is, if he asks, Allah always responds to. And if a dua is made, Allah always answers that dua. What is the Ismullah al-A'zam? There are many opinions, but uh, in my research, Allah knows best, there are two opinions that have come to that seem to be very, very strong. And I'll just leave it at that, between these two names. The first name is the name Allah itself. This is the Ismullah al-A'zam. And the second opinion is that Al-Hay al-Qayyum. Al-Hay al-Qayyum. The, the, the combination of Al-Hay al-Qayyum. This is the Ismullah al-A'zam. When you combine the narrations and the ayat and the ahadith that mention the Ism al-A'zam, you find that these three names have always been mentioned. Allah and al hayy al-Qayyum. But for example, the Prophet said the ism, ism Allah al-A'zam is in Ayat al-Kursi. Ayat al-Kursi, if you read it, Allah la ilaha illa wa al-Hayy al-Qayyum. The first three names are these three names. Okay? And also he said there at the beginning of Surah Al-Ali Imran, Ali Imran starts off with Alif Lam Mim, Allah la ilaha illa wa al-Hayy al-Qayyum. Same thing here. Okay? So Allah knows best. It is either Allah, the name itself, Jalla Jalaluhu, or it is Al-Hay Al-Qayyum. And we can use all of these names and more when we make uh, du'as. But the point is that this concept is called Tawassul. We come closer to Allah by using His names and attributes. Tawassul. Ya Rabb, Ya Ghafoor, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Tawwab, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim. This is the prelude that we give. After we do this, this is the first etiquette, right? Which is the prelude of uh, yani the, the praising of Allah. We should also then raise our hand up to Allah. And this is a sunnah that every single Muslim, young or old, jahid or alim, everyone knows. You raise your hands up to Allah to make a dua. And it